Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sudish and I am your instructor for this walkthrough. We are going through an AZ 900 Azure Fundamentals Examination course. In this walk, we are going to create a custom template to create a virtual machine. Then we are going to implement a network security group or NSG. We are going to create a couple of rules, one inbound rule to allow RDP and one outbound rule to deny the internet access. So without wasting any more time, let's go and see how to do that. Now we are in our Azure portal. So the first step is we are going to create a Windows Server 2019 data center virtual machine. So for that, I'm going to go inside the virtual machine or you can directly go to all services and type in virtual machine to get here as well. So first, select your subscription and uh, you need to have a resource group before creating any resource within Azure. We talked about it many times. In this instance, I chose the existing Azure resource group, which I've been using it for the whole exercise. Name your virtual machine. I named it as simple uh, Windows VM. Choose a region. And uh, we talked about availability systems and availability option. Uh, ignore that. In the image, uh, select a Windows Server 2019 and uh, give a username and password to log into your Windows Server. So Azure user is the username I chose and uh, you need to give a strong password before signing in. By default, there are a lot of options where you can configure to allow or not allow any ports within your VM. In this instance, because we are trying to secure the network and test it, I'm not going to allow any inbound port. That means that there is not going to be any connection to and from the virtual machine when you start creating this virtual machine from the get-go. One additional step, what we're going to do is we're going to go under the networking tab and we're going to disable or not have any network security group created by default. Because if you don't select that option, by default, a basic network security group will be created and internet access will be provided based on that. So we chose no and we validate all the settings. This is one more chance you can do that. And then hit on create to create your virtual machine. Now that our deployment is underway, I have fast forwarded this video to make it pretty fast. So what is happening under the hood is it is creating the virtual machine. Before that, it is creating a brand new VNet and a default subnet to place this virtual machine and a NIC and a public IP for connecting to the VM as well. So now our deployment is completed. You can click on go to resource to straight away take you into uh, the virtual machine. Now we are inside the virtual machine. You can check the status by looking into status. It says it's running. You can check the size of the VM, where it's been hosted, which location is it, what's the IP address, what's the DNS detail, etc. Let's look into the networking tab. As you can see that there is no inbound ports, there is no outbound port rules, and there is no application security groups as well because we chose to not have a network security group created by default when we start creating this virtual machine. The next step, we're gonna create a new network security group and then we're gonna assign that network security group to this virtual machine. So I'm going to go to all services, type in network security groups, select network security group. As you can see that I don't have any NSGs at the moment. Uh, we're going to follow the drill we've been following for a while now. I'm selecting the AZ900 resource group to keep the NSG. We're going to provide a name for the resource, which is network security group now. And uh, we're going to retain the same region as by default, click on review and create. And that is going to create our first network security group. And the deployment is fairly fast because there is nothing much in the backend need to be created. Uh, it's a platform as a service offering where we get to create inbound and outbound rule to specify the traffic flow between these network resources and fro from internet. So looks like our deployment has been completed. 
Now, once you're inside the network security group, you can see under the overview itself, there are a few inbound rules and outbound rules created by default. You won't be able to modify or delete these rules. So the next thing what we're going to do is now we have our NSG created. We're going to associate this NSG to the network interface card of the virtual machine we created just before. So I'm going to go to network interfaces and there is no NIC assigned to this NSG. So I'm going to associate something to it. So I'm going to select the simple VM NIC, which is the network interface card for the virtual machine we just created. And now you can see that this NSG will be associated to that VM. As you can see that uh, already the NIC has been associated to the NSG. Now, if I go back to my virtual machine, select the simple VM. If I go under networking, as you can see that all these inbound and outbound policies, which was part of that NSG, has been now part of this simple VM as well. The next task, what we are going to go and do is we are going to connect to the VM and we are going to see that if we are able to connect to the simple VM using RDP. So I downloaded the RDP file. I'm going to connect to the VM. This is going to check if I am allowed to connect to the VM via RDP port. So my RDP connection is trying to establish a connection to the public IP of the Azure VM. Uh, looks like it is still retrained. I can see that it's still not connected. So it says that a uh, remote desktop is unable to connect to the session. So that means that there is no RDP acceptable port, which is accepting the connection. Let us go and modify the inbound and outbound rule to allow the RDP connection and to allow the internet connection to the virtual machine. So as you can see that this port is being blocked. Uh, we won't be able to modify the default port. So the only way we can do is we can add a new RDP port. So for that, we're going to create a new inbound rule. We're going to select source any, source port ranges asterisk, destination any, and destination port 3389 for RDP. Protocol is TCP, action allow, and we're going to select a lower priority so that lower priority pins or lower priority take precedence of all the other numbers. So I'm going to put a number 300 and name. I'm going to give a name for this rule called allow RTP. So that's how simple it is to create a new inbound rule to allow an RDP on a VM with a simple step. It's quite simple, right? So you just go inside a network security group and you basically create a rule. And uh, once the rule is created, uh, it's fairly quick as well. You can refresh and see that the rule is being applied. Now, if we go back to the VM and uh, try to establish the connection, you would be able to connect to the VM via RDP. So we can test that. So I'm going to go back to the VM again, download the RDP file. I use two screens. So every time when I launch a file, I have to drag it from my other monitor to this recording monitor. So I can't make this one primary because it, it has to change a lot of things. So, so I'm going to give the username and password to connect to the VM. As you can already see that it start, started establishing connection to the VM, uh, which is hosted in Azure. So let's skip the certificate error and click on S. And as you can see that it is already con connecting to the Azure VM. Every time I have to go back to the other window and drag and drop back to the recording window. This is so funny. Right. So right now it is connecting. So that means that uh, your our test for connecting the inbound port worked. So we simply created an inbound rule and it allowed us to connect to the VM, which is fantastic. Now that we have successfully completed task one, the task two of this particular task is 
to configure an outbound security rule to deny internet traffic. So for that, what I'm going to do right now is to log into the VM and to show you that we have by default internet access from this VM. So I'm going to launch an internet browser, internet explorer, and uh, we're going to go to bing.com or microsoft.com to see if we can connect to the domain. And after the test, we'll go back to our Azure portal. And this time we're going to modify an outbound rule, which is going to block any sort of internet traffic outside from this VM. So as you can see that I can go outside to the internet, to any website from within this VM. So now I'm back into my Azure portal. I'm going to go back to the VM and uh, I'm going to go back to network networking. And this time I want to go back to the outbound rule. So in this scenario, as you can see that I have three outbound rules created already. These are all default rules. I won't be able to modify anything. So it says that allow internet outbound access, any, any is allowed. So that's default. But if you look at the priority, it's a high number. So the only thing what I need to do is create one more deny rule to internet and provide a lower priority to take that into effect. So I won't be able to delete it. So as you can see that uh, if I created these rules, I would be able to delete it. So in this instance, I'm going to create a new rule, source any, uh, source port star or asterisk, destination service tag, uh, destination service tag is internet. So you just need to type in internet to get the internet and destination port range as asterisk as well. Protocol is TCP and action is TNA. And this time, yeah, let's select the protocol as TCP and the action is DNA because we want to block the internet traffic. And the priority is where we're going to set a lower number than the default value. So the default value is on the high of 68,000 or 62,000. So we just need to make sure that we are lower than that. So I'm going to put like maybe 4,000, for example and uh, give a name as Dine Internet. So when you look into the rule, you without even reviewing the rule, you know that what this rule all about. And uh, put the description if you want, it's not mandatory, it's just copied and pasted as same as the description and click on add. And just like the inbound rule, uh, the outbound rule will also be created super fast because just a rule we are adding to an existing NSG. As you can see that the rule has been already created. Uh, now if I go back to my network security tab and outbound rule, as you can see that the lower priority is displayed on top and it says that the traffic, TCP traffic is blocked. So if I refresh this window, probably it will connect because it's already in this session. So I'm going to close the Internet Explorer browser, relaunch it, and I'm gonna go to either bing.com or microsoft.com. Let's go to microsoft.com. Right, so it is trying to connect, so already it start working. So it's super effective and super powerful and super fast. So as soon as you created an outbound rule, now from this VM, all the internet traffic is being blocked. So fantastic. So we have tested two different scenarios. So one, we allowed the RDP port to connect to the VM by an inbound rule. And we created an outbound rule to block the internet traffic from the VM to outside or from Azure to the outside world. So I hope the information provided was super useful. Congratulations. Now you have learned on how to secure your network using Network Security Group in Azure. As always, I'm going to remove these resources we created to avoid additional cost.
So now in this walkthrough, we learned about creating a simple virtual machine, creating a network security group, and we first logged into the VM and uh, we tested the inbound security port, which was not allowed. Then we allowed the RDP port. Then we configured the output security port, which denied the internet access to the VM as well. In the next video, we're going to talk about the core Azure identity services. So I will see you on the next video. Till then, take care.